And we are live. Welcome, coaches. How are y'all doing on this Thursday night? I am here with Coach Jason Phillips. Now, we were supposed to do this last Thursday, but Mother Nature had other ideas. They were like the defense. They were trying to stop the RPO and the choice routes and all that, and we said, heck with that. We're going right now. So, uh, Coach Phillips, if those coaches that don't know who you are, could you give us a little uh, background about your history in football, and then we're going to be talking about some RPOs. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, my name is Jason Phillips. I'm at Alcorn State University. Um, we're in Mississippi, right here on the river. Um, you know, a little bit about halfway between Jackson and Natchez. So, if you draw a circle of nowhere, put a dot right in the middle of it. That's Alcorn State. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've been here. This is actually the anniversary of my start date three years ago. So, starting the fourth year here, um, we've been very. Uh, successful in my time obviously we didn't play we didn't play in the fall we're not going to play in the spring um the previous two years we won our conference championship and played a bowl game both those years um you know before that i've kind of got i've been everywhere i've been at every level except for um the nfl um started out in high school in east tennessee um you know had no idea. Thought I knew everything like a lot of people and had no idea. Um, so I started out in wing T um, and, and kind of progressed from there from some different high schools. Um, was was a coordinator at like 24 or 5. And again, thought I knew even more, but really knew even less. Um, uh, eventually, I got my first college job at Tusculum College in 2008. Uh, was there for a couple of years, went back to high school for a year, and then ended up at St. Joseph's College in Indiana, um, which is right there south of Chicago, um, and then made it back down to Mississippi the first time. I was in junior college uh, a couple of different times, um, Southwest Mississippi Community College and Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, uh, and it kind of sandwiched in between those, did a year at Troy. Uh, and like I said, now I'm here. At all corn, um, and you know, very fortunate to have been around a lot of guys who are very successful now and are very good football coaches. Uh, but like we were talking about earlier, this is how I learned football. I, I was not, um, you know, I wasn't a power five GA that you know worked for a famous guru guy, and uh, I learned it from back in the day. I couldn't, we didn't have podcasts, obviously. So, um, like we talked about, uh, Remind me of the website again. Coach Huey. Coach Huey. I used to live on that tank thing, man. Um, what was his screen name? Uh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'm sure back then it was like four verts or something crazy, you know. Mine was crappy air raid coach. Okay. I'm sure we may have fought. You know, we probably fought. Probably. probably. Um, but – you know, I learned it there, just, you know, whatever I could find and, and piecing things together. Uh, and I obviously got some opportunities along the way to be with some really great coaches. But, um, you know, like everybody else, things that we do, we've taken from other places and kind of made it our own. Um, but, you know, we've we've come up with a way to package it that we think really uh, best suits our personnel uh, and the personnel that we can get here at our school. Um and, and puts them in the best possible situation. So uh, I love this. I really do. I know we started uh, with Keith, um, uh, I guess a couple months ago. And to me, this is awesome. This is the only way I could learn football. I, I've been hit up a lot on Twitter since we really started putting stuff out there. Um, and anybody, anytime you, you hit me on Twitter, I'm going to hit you back because God, I wish I would have had this stuff when I was starting or hell right in the middle of it, you know? So uh, I appreciate you having me. Well, thanks for coming on. And I'll, I'll, we're going to get in the RPOs because the way you call it, I've never seen before, and it was very interesting, and I want to dive into that. But how was the transition from wing T to what you do now? Because a lot of wing T coaches are very set in their ways. They won't, don't want to try anything. And I'm not saying other coaches are like that no. either, but wing T kind of has that that stigma about them that they don't want to change, like this is the Bible right. and everything like that. How was that transition for you? Yeah. You know, I would tell you that I still do it today. <laughs> I mean, and, and seriously, because, and we'll talk about it, and I'll show you kind of how um, we go about setting up the RPO and calling the plays and, and getting into actual, during the game, how we go about it. 
um, of going through the different packages. But it's if then, you know what I mean? And I think of this as the 20 series, Delaware Wing T. I was working Delaware Wing T camps down there at uh, West Georgia. And um, we're going through 20 series and the three techniques up the field. We got to run trap and, you know, um, and, and working through the buck sweep series. Um, so, and, you know, I, I, my high school, co- my high school coach is great. He's the reason I do this. Um, yeah, we named our son after him. He's, he's you know, a, a great guy. The reason I do this, he's also the winningest coach ever winning percentage wise um, at Maribel high school. Um, so I've been around those guys early and that's kind of where I got roots. Now I've learned different things and ways to implement it, but that's roots. So like, that's how I think of things is if they do this, I do this and got tired of seeing things get blown up. Like we're throwing bubbles in the cloud corners. I got tired of it because how I'm coaching the receiver out there and getting fussed at over my guy can't block that corner. Who's cutting like, well, coach, let's come up with a better way to do this stuff. So um it's really that's what led us to even to this and even today as as as, you know we go play a game uh, at turner field in august i'm going to be sitting there and i'm watching specific people in turns with whatever play we've got called in order to get the next one called so i think that really you know we don't run buck sweep um but we, we implement that same procedure i think Okay, and I love it. I back there, I have the the Bible, the Delaware Wing Tee mm-hmm. every off season because, like you, I do like that if then structure. It's just something mm-hmm. with my brain that that makes me uh, like it. And coaches, if you have any questions, we've got coaches already here. We got Travis. He he talks to you. That's his YouTube name. Uh, the uh, football nerd. We got like uh, Tony bradley what's going on how you doing willie how how's it going on if you have any questions put them in the comments and we will uh answer them i am interested in you we've talked all off air how you who cincinnati hit you up pit hit you up on because they're trying to crack the rpo code like they want to know about rpos and how to defend it yeah we've had offenses and defenses you know um and in, in, in getting to share some different things, um, you know, we've got some guys that, um, you know, that I'm friends with, some guys I worked with that you now coach at different places have wanted to, you know, like, how, what's your spin? How's this going on? We don't necessarily, as defensive coaches, you know, they've got a thousand coverages over there. We'll call it cover four, you know, uh, the same way we'll throw a hitch for whatever reason on a run play. And it's, it's all just RPO. And, you know, like I think a lot of times defensive guys, they lump this in. And I, the, the way I told him was like if if we ran split zone, power, counter, outside zone, like you're not going to put them up on the board and just say, here's the runs. Like here's – okay, that's runs. Uh, there's different processes, these RPOs. There's different, you know, obviously different levels and, and, and layers to it and – a structure that you put together by what you're presented with. Um, and so there's just, there's obviously there's more to it uh, and details of it. Um, but you can make RPO as easy uh, or as in depth as you want. And I think that's a great part of it. Um, it, it is you can fit personnel to any of these things. Um, so that's to me, like, I think we've all got quarterbacks that can throw a hitch, a slant, and out um and now i can make this i can make this more without having to put in new plays or getting crazy or getting different or coming up with the next big thing um so that's that's to me is the big draw of it um you know a lot of times when like you talked about the the way we go about calling the routes and stuff in the rpo um we don't have crazy routes. Like you're going to see us do the same thing that everybody else and their, and their brother does. Um, we're going to throw bubbles and, and glances and, and, and things like that. Uh, our process is to try to make sure we call it at the right time. Um, that we're going to look really smart if we're throwing the bubble when we're always running away from safety and having a soft corner because that kid's going to, you know, if it's average, if it's even, we're going to win that because we know where we're going and they don't. Um, so we look really smart when we call that. 
Uh, but we're just throwing bubbles. So everybody's like, ah, oh, he's just throwing bubbles. Well, I got great players, but we're just trying to make sure we're getting it called at the right time as opposed to being a play behind, um, which I know in terms of our call sheet, that really helps us out in terms of used to be we'd have, all right, we've got split some, and then we'd have five different RPO routes out here. And now we don't necessarily do that. So you don't get bogged down in having these five different things that you, uh, how do I call that and get that in? We go off structure um, and put, you know, teach our kids the structure and then put some trust in them that um, they're going to make us right um, and, and get them some ownership of it. And because at the end of the day, um, you know, if, if we're calling glance and that safety's sitting on the hash waiting to knock us out, He's going to be the guy that's going to get knocked out. Not me. You know what I mean? They're just going to say, oh, man, that coach is terrible. I can live with that. I don't have a headache. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he's the one that's going to get hit. Um, so he's going, to, he's going to make sure that he gets his, his chance to be successful and to be right and to shine. So um, he's going to put a lot of stock into that. And what I like about that, what you talked about making the right play call, is you kind of – you have that broken down in a, in a sheet of paper like your play calling mm-hmm. sheet. It also builds on – the wing T philosophy of yeah. this. And do you mind bringing that up and showing everybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'll kind of show you there, if I can let me make sure I get this right. And coaches, while he's doing that, thank y'all so much for being here. We are close to 80 people in the chat right now. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. I will answer them. And then here is his call sheet. Okay. Or, I may have just messed this up. All right, so this is kind of an example. This is what would be on our call sheet. Um, we have five of these. So um, we match it to the runs as best we can. Um, so this is kind of our explanation of it is um, throughout the week in game planning, we're going to find the formations, motion shifts. That not necessarily give us – it's going to give us the most consistent, reliable look. So uh, we want to do whatever we have to um, – to, if we want to run power at the three technique to make sure that we're running power at the three technique. Um, and it should be able to clearly answer questions like, are we getting squeezed? Is a box DN? Who's the force player going to be? Um, and we treat it as a continuum. Okay. So we can run up and down this, this, this continuum right here either way. And with the ultimate goal being let's run our base play. We want to run our base play. Um, and then, you know, we also will build the pass game this way as well. Um, you know, our base, if we're just kind of call a pass play, it's cross. So every week we're going to build this um, off of cross. And, and then your responses um, will lead us to the next call. All right. So just kind of an example right here. Um, we have the base play. And then we'll also, as part of what we do, is we'll field zone and we'll formation and down a distance and those things. Uh, one thing that we really uh, started doing um, is after situations. So we get some more consistent look at the emotional part of the defensive or the guy that's calling the play as a defensive coordinator, um, you know, of what looks we're going to get, say, right here in this base. It says normal down after an efficient pass. So uh, I've got a pretty good idea if it's second and four and I just completed a hitch of what I'm going to get from this guy. Okay. His emotional state of that, of that particular circumstance. Um, it's also going to be based on the score, whether it be a tie game or, or plus one or plus two scores, or minus one, minus two scores. So um, that's really helped us because you don't realize a lot of times to yourself, Scott, because you just pull up second long and you see all the second long plays. Um, but how'd you get the second long? You know what I mean? So, like, after an uh, explosive run, an explosive pass, tackle for loss, taking in that emotional account of, um, all right, this guy thinks he's got me on the ropes. So let's see what he's doing right here. Is this the time to scream? So, anyways, that that's really helped us um, kind of get a peek into what that guy feels over there on the other side as well. How do you do that? Because that's very smart. I like how you're trying to get into the defensive coordinator's mind frame. Like, is that something you do – Game planning wise, or is that something like? Yeah, that's, that's game plan wise. So, you know, if we, 
Uh, let's say we're playing the first game of the year, we're playing at North Carolina Central. Well, they're out of conference, so we're going to have to find as much film as we can and ask around. And as you know, two, two or three games, um, you can get a good sample on that. I mean, we'll go off two, three, four games, but you just want to make sure you have enough sample size. Um, and then we'll, we'll break it up um, by the score, you know, and, and pull, those, pull those clips out first by the score and then go through and break those down of – all right, so basically like you're just watching the game. And, then, and that's part of, I guess, the way to think about it is you're just watching this game. All right, it's P and 10, and, and um, we break off a 10-yard run. Well, you know, is he going to let us do that again? Is he going to stay base defense first and 10 after an explosive? And we'll just break it in those categories. Um, you know, one, one good thing, we, like we go to the red zone. All right, so it's first and 10 on the plus 20, all right, and he's running this defense. We don't know why. Like, we don't – a lot of times in game planning, we don't take into account how we got there. We're just looking at plays at the 20-yard line. Um, and, yeah, it's red zone. It's situational. You can pick up tendencies there. But it's – he's going to have a little bit different look. If I just – I threw a pass um, and got 50 and tackled on the 20-yard line, as opposed to if, if I've been going five a five a carry and just cramming it down his throat and now I'm at the 20. Um, you know, so we're telling us how we got to the situation. I, I think that's a big one. Um, it's how we got here. What is this after? Um, is this P and 10? Yeah, I've got my drive starters. But like what part of the game are we in? Did they just score? Is it the beginning of the half? Um, so take into account each specific situation. Uh, from an emotional standpoint, because we've all been there, you know, I think if you if you ask yourself truthfully right now, it's second and ten. What are you calling? Well, did I throw an incompletion? Did I get stuffed on the run? You know what I mean? So like you you have this for yourself. You may not know it, but if, if you did this to yourself in a self scout, you're going to pick up that you know whenever we're in this situation, I have a heavy tendency to run at the boundary or, or, or be two by two. Uh, and throwing Y stick, um, you know, because you find out real quick what someone's comfort blanket is, you know. Uh, is it blitz me? If you got two first downs in a row, is it blitz me? Um, is it I'm not going to – I'm going to play base. I need to get back to what we do and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that's been a good way for us to find out, you know, how we got there, what they're thinking, what they're feeling. Well, have you always? Because you're absolutely right. I know without a shadow of doubt, if it's first and ten, and I throw an incompletion, I'm about ninety five percent sure that I'm going to run some form of of run. Wait, yeah. Did you stumble upon this, or is this something that you've always done? Like this, this is a this is a defensive guy kind of deal. I got it from a defensive guy. So love it. My first college job was at Tuscan College, um, and our defensive coordinator. I was a young guy. I was like twenty eight. 29, I can't remember. And, uh, our defense coordinator was 24 or 25. Um, and he, he's the defense coordinator for University of Alabama now. Um, so this is kind of how they did it. Okay. And he got it from, from you know, from Ron Roberts that's at Baylor now and, and those guys. Uh, but this is kind of what, this is what they're doing to you. Uh, they're, they're trying to find out your emotional response to when good things happen and when bad things happen. If you're up, you're down. If it's a tight game, if it's even, um, like they're they're taking this approach to us, and I said, well, shit, you know, let's do it to them. <laughs> so, and you you'd be surprised at you know how heavy some tendencies can get. Um, you know, boundary pressure, field pressure, when's it coming? What it you know, second and three after a run. You know, a lot of times you're going to get some internal pressure because it's like you just had a, you just gashed them for seven. So I mean, you're 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 gonna they ain't gonna let that happen again. You know, um, there's a lot of response you'll get. So you'll you'll find a lot about that. Let me let me see if I can find the specific situations. Ah, uh, freaking love that. And coaches, while he's pulling that up, does anybody in the chat do y'all do the same thing? Do you break down your opponent that way? Because when I'm breaking about, I kind of I pick up on it if I just happen to watch films, but I never go in there 
for that reason of trying to figure out what the defensive coordinator is doing. That is very nice, and I'm going to definitely do that this year. So this is our these are our after situations, okay? So we'll categor, categorize each uh, situation by score. And again, if you only have a couple games, I would say you could probably leave the score out of it, um, and just be aware. You know, we all like we all know it's fifty to nothing. I, I I'm not going to chart as much there at the end of the game, um, but like. If you got a good sample size, three, four games, uh, I mean, and you'll be shocked if you're playing like in our conference, we don't have that, a whole lot of turnover. So I may play the, the uh, we're going to go play uh, Alabama State, and, and they're going to have the same guy two, three years in a row. So we will always do our previous games that we played and, and, and see how that stacks up with their most current games. And if we need more, we'll, we'll, we'll have from previous years that we'll pull out just to kind of see where he's at. Um, and, and if you do this year to year, you may find like, okay, this guy feels like he's got a really good team. And you fill out, you can, you can find out how he feels about his personnel. Um, so here, here's, like I said, here's specific situations. We'll go the first 12 of each game, uh, just straight down the list. The first six plays of the second half, which you wouldn't think is much, but you find out real quick what their adjustments and how they're going to go about it. Um, so that's one that I really include in, in tips and reminders with wide receivers is to let them know, hey, we come out second half, this is what you're going to see. It's one of the last things I say to them in the locker room at halftime because you're going to find that that guy's going to come out of the, come out of the second half. You know, He's going to try to force a turnover. Here comes – you know, the Blitzburg Steelers or <laughs> you're going to get quarters and he's going to make you drive it. Like you're going to find out pretty quick. You'd be shocked at that one. Um, we want to see the first blitz of the game and kind of when that is more than anything else. Um, you know, just kind of just find the first one, see what it is, when it is. Uh, the first play of each drive after crossing the 50. So does he, when does he feel threatened? Um crossing into the 25, crossing in the 10. So like when he feels like we're driving um, or, or we're establishing some movement of the football, how's he feeling? Uh, but the big ones we'll get that are every down that lead into normal down call uh, play calling uh, after a tackle for loss, you know, is he trying to pile on, you know, he gets me on first down. Um, what am I doing right there on second down? Uh after you know, we we had different categories for this. We just decided to go with after run of ten plus. So if I hand the ball off and get a first down, what's happening next? Um, after a ten yard pass, second and ten after an incompletion, is he going to heat you up? Is he going to play coverage? Is you know, is he going to load the box because he thinks you're, that's a great RPO down? We'll find you know second and ten. We'll find all right, this is where they're really going to try to get that boundary safety involved. Let's get over here and, you know, let's RPO him. Um, second and five or less after a completion, so an efficient pa pass. You've thrown quick game. It's not something where you've, you know, pushed the ball down the field. Maybe I threw a stop route in, in the RPO and second and, and efficient. So second and seven plus after a run. We just think of that in terms of um, just a normal run play, and we kind of they, – they, they stopped us a little bit. Um, and then efficient run. And then we'll always do a check with me cut up just to see if they're if they're one of those guys that when I check they check just just because I checked you know some of those guys are like that. Um, <laughs> now, what do you do when you don't have that? Now I'm sure it's different from college than it is in high school. But what if you don't have that stuff? Is that what you're looking for during the game and trying to get it? In uh, you know, it through. depends because we don't have, you know, we don't uh, same. we're the same in a lot of ways. We don't have necessarily that much personnel to chart all of these. Um, it's, we'll go back to these as reminders and we're charting the whole thing. And I will have to go back either between quarters at half in between series. If, if you know, there's TV timeouts or whatnot. And I can kind of go back and check on some of these to see if they hold true. Um, and we'll go off that. But once we get going, if we'll, and again, I'm going to go back to this other one, it'll maybe make sense a little bit. 
So we structure it um, off of that right there, okay? So normal down after an efficient pass, that's when we want to get to this line, okay? You know, this, this strand of this chain of play calls right here. Um, if we're at the base, this is where we want to go, okay? Um, now, and I'll get to kind of how we use this thing. We don't just go, all right, let's go here. Let's go to the base, the front side scheme adjustment, support player, backside pursuit, and just go in order, okay? So let's say, um, you know, we've got a drive starter. We've got normal downs. We've got situations. These are just first, second down calls for us, okay? Um, it's also how we script. So we got a drive starter, a good play. Maybe it's we're going to get a speed sweep to our best guy. It doesn't necessarily fit into these chain of play calls, okay? Um, it's a standalone thing that we practiced that week and we feel like we got an advantage of, okay? So then we're going to script five of these, right? And these are – comes out to 25 plays that is our base package for that week, okay? Um, so we treat those first – five uh, play calls as our base. We want to see what they're going to do. This is it, Does it hold up? Now, we also want to try our best to match it to these situations, normal down after an efficient pass. All right. So this isn't going to be play number two. If, if our, if our first play of the series uh, PN 10 is speed sweep, we're not, we're not going to be coming to, to noon, right? Zach tick 26 power the next one. Cause it doesn't fit in that category. Um, so let's say we come out drive starter and we throw all empty, all stops and we complete it. And it's second and four. Um, now that tells us here's my first play that I need to come to in that situation. Okay. Um, so, all right. So now I'm into, my, uh, my my chain of play calls here. So we've gone noon right, Zach, tick, 26 power, which is basically I'm lining up 11 personnel, three by one to the field. I'm going to motion Z, who is number two for us. It's going to motion him to make twins in the boundary. And then I'm going to tick the back across to be running same side power to the field. Okay, so I've made FIB and I'm running power to the field. Okay, and that's our way. We want to you know dictate the three. Um, get it kicked. That's what we're expecting to have happen. Okay. So we run this play. We run noon, right? <clears throat> Zach tick 26 power. And, and it, part of that is the RPO goes, if it's not tagged in there, it's an access package. So it's built in. So stops, bubbles, run rules. Um, it's already built into that. So if we have the ability to throw those, um, we can get the ball out there. Now, what the box guy is looking at, or I'm sorry, what each coach is looking at is there's a guy assigned to the front side scheme. It's usually that's going to be your O-line coach, point of attack. Um, I'm upstairs, so I'm going to be sitting there thinking of support player and the safeties for my shots and tricks. So I'm watching these guys, and then we'll have a running backs coach or a quarterback's coach is watching backside pursuit, Okay. So we run this play. If it's good, we check good. We don't need to go and move on to anything. Everything was, you know, we got the look we expected. All right. Not necessarily that the play was good. The look was good. The look is what we practice. Okay. Now we come out and, and the look is bad. It was not what we game planned and what we practiced. All right. So let's say maybe they went to an under front and they're spilling the hell out of the end. Okay. And they're spilling it and we're making this balanced power. OK, so that's a front side scheme adjustment It is different than what we had. So we would say it was bad. Why you would get you know, an F.A. front side scheme adjustment. So that plays done. We go to the next uh, chain. So maybe cross. It may be split zone, <clears throat> whatever. We got a third down call. We get a drive. The drive ends. We scored a touchdown. Yay. <laughs> We come back between the series and on the headsets, what you're going to go is a rundown of the play, just like everybody else. So what you're going to hear is play number one, drive start. We did this. Play number two, we ran noon right, Zach tick, 26 power. It was bad. Why was it bad? Front side scheme adjust. 
So I know I'm already building my script for the next series. It's telling me I need to run here. I need to go noon right Zach tick 26 Popeye. Okay. Um, so I don't have to go in and uh, they told me this is what I need to run. So again, I've got five of these chains. I'm building a five play script. Okay. And I'm doing that on the sideline in game. So the next time I get the football, I'll hit one of these eight drive starters that I've game plan. All right. And let's say this time for this specific situation, it's a normal down after a non-efficient pass. So whatever the drive starter is, I thought a bubble out there and, you know, it got tackled for three yards or I threw an incompletion, whatever, what have you, non-efficient pass. All right. So now we need to come to based off game plan and the emotional response of this guy that we're playing against. He's front side schema jets. He's gone from being, instead of being the three, five over there and we're getting it kicked. He's gone shade five and he's spilling the hell out of the end and forcing it to to, to bounce. Okay, so we've, we now come and he's telling us to run this play in this situation. Uh, the same response happens. Is it good or bad? All right. Um, it's bad. Why was it bad? Well, here comes the safety fitting. All right. The safety's running the alley like a bat out of hell. All right. So our next response as we get back to this. Just don't wait. Like, we're not setting anything up. They just told you this safety spill in the alley. Let's get to our shot or our trick play. So, again, same process comes through. We're in the series. Drive start. All right. We, we get a drive start, and, you know, we throw throw that same bubble out there at the right look this time. And it, it breaks off for 15. Our immediate call should be right here, noon right Zach ticks. The so same formation, same motion, and we want to run um, T burner, which is you know you guys see Alabama run that stuff all the time with the deep corner and the cross and, and that kind of stuff. That's our shot boy for that specific look. Um, so that kind of tells us where to get to, and that's to me that's getting back to that you know wing T if then. Um, Bang, bang, bang. Where do I need to get to? So I hit a shot. If this goes off and let's, let's say I hit this shot trick play, I need to come back to my base and start this whole process over with on this chain of, of plays. Uh, do, you, do you do this for every – like to me, this seems like kind of series-based. So for power, this is what we're doing. This is our series. Uh, could be. For inside zone or is this – It can be. Okay, so like – Again, you you guys you see Alabama do this. Um, they put twins in the boundary. They motion number one in orbit motion behind the quarterback, and then they have same side counter and a bubble, right? Okay. So maybe it's built off that motion and how you react. Are you rocking your safeties? Are you bumping your backers? Um, so I, I can. How do you adjust to that motion? And however you adjust that motion dictates what I need to do next to attack you. Okay. So it can be built off power. You know, it can be built off a play, a scheme. It can be built off a motion. It can be built off pass. So um, if I'm going to run cross and, um, you know, the mic, they're always too high and two by two and we're running cross and the mic is going to continue to match number, uh, the number two, the number three and, and run with that cross, I've got a chance to get that isolation on the will on an option route. I can read the mic and go that way. Um, so that would be a response in here. Mike plays, you know, how many weak second level droppers, backside safety, front side safety, and it would lead us to this in each way. So um, this is just an example of what we would have in terms of uh, to this one power chain right here. Um, and how we would get to it. Um, and, and that kind of leads into some of the RPO where do we want to read support players where we get back into talking, uh, call it and talk and activate and stuff where the receivers are calling the routes to the, to the quarterback because these support players are now becoming legit issues. They're not just peeking in there and giving us access to throw hitches and, and sticks and out routes. They're making big movements that we can take advantage of. 
So now this would tell me again, I need to go ahead and let's, let's be aggressive in our mindset with this RPO. Okay. Whereas if it's a backside pursuit issue, I would probably better up better off with maybe some intermediate play action with a puller or, or getting that guy across or however I've got to get that done. Um, you know, shot trick plays. We're, we're doing something a little bit new or we're reading rotation in the RPO and pushing the ball vertically a little bit more with deep choice. Um, you know, we're, we're, if they ever let us play football again, that's what we're looking to get to. Um, but getting a chance now to push some routes a little bit deeper. And to me, it's kind of like back in the day, again, I'm from East Tennessee. So we're all big Peyton Manning fans um, where he would go to the line of scrimmage and he'd have three play calls and it was, outside zone left, right, and a pass play. And he was checking off that rotation. Well, we're doing that now in, in RPO where we're always going to run away from rotation or we're always going to throw away from rotation and attack seams um, and get the ball vertical. So that could fit right there into that shot trick if the safeties are doing it. So what that shot trick is, is that maybe they're spinning down in the alley or they're buzzing uh, safeties. Now I need to take advantage and read that rotation. So this can go however you need it to go. Um, I, I, I want to stop you right there because that seems that that sounds sexy. Now, is that like a dual play that you're letting your quarterback check off? Or is that one thing built into the play that if the safeties don't rotate, he's handing it off. But if they do, yeah. rotate, then he's pulling it and then throwing a choice route. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna try to do it more off of outside zone uh, okay. stuff where we don't, or maybe like uh, GT counter, and we can block the backside end. We'll still keep make sure he's protected, uh, but stuff where the the O line is a little bit more lateral, so we don't have to worry about getting downfield as much. So now we start working into we can get the ball pushed, we can get our routes pushed a little bit more uh, down the field as opposed to getting five and six step being the max of our routes, now we can get to talking deep choice and that guy can can give me one more revolution, one more turnover, and I can get the ball thrown before these guys start disengaging and getting up the field. Um, so, yeah, and to answer your question, if, if we're running outside zone to the right and they rotate to the right into our run, we want to throw deep choice away from the rotation. So it's a post-snap decision. So he's not necessarily RPOing a guy, I guess you would say, like if the outside linebacker bites in on my run, I'm replacing it with a slant. It's not necessarily that kind of deal, but we're, we're treating it as just old school. If some some of you guys are a little bit older, you'll. I always want to run away from rotation and throw away from rotation, and so we're trying to make Peyton Manning's deal go with RPO. Oh, that's so you're having them read kind of like an area. He's going to look at, for us, it's going to be the, the – uh, we've kind of gone back and forth. We can get it to different things if we need it to be. But, all right, so we're going to say the field safety is going to be the guy that most likely is going to show us rotation. So to start out in our base way of doing it as we install it, we may be running zone outside zone right, outside zone left, whatever. We're going to look at that field safety. It's either going to step down and blitz strong or he's going to be the one that rolls to the post. Um, so if we're running outside zone, right. And I'm, I'm, and that's the field and I'm reading this safety. If he starts rotating to my run to the field and yeah, my eyes may be to the field, but now I can reset and throw back to my left with a deep choice. that should be working one-on-one -on -one away from rotation. Oh, that's nice. What um, that is the, I, I do something because I, I, I love that kind of stuff. And again, if you guys have seen any of the, the the videos and stuff that we have on Coach Tube, um, great segue because I do have the link <laughs> right there. Coach, uh, if you want, he's got a bunch of videos up on Coach Tube that are freaking unbelievable. And I'm going to go ahead and drop your Twitter account as well. Awesome, awesome. Then, yeah. Yeah. But um, you talk about the, doing this in those videos. We do not talk about that. We don't talk about the rotation. Oh. You are getting an exclusive here, guys. Exclusive. Yeah, we, 
we don't talk about the rotation just simply because uh, we've done a little bit of it, but we haven't got it on any film. So we don't want to put it out there if we don't have good film of it, you know? Gotcha. Uh, so hopefully yeah, give us 12 months and I'll have you some good film of it. Heck yeah, man. But th that's one thing that we're trying to get to and, 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 and take advantage of that. And if you guys have seen those things, you realize we, we keep it pretty uniform across most of the entire offense for what the quarterback is responsible for um, in terms of RPO game, pass game, doesn't matter. He, he's got a really good feel on what he has to control and where he needs to get the football to. And, and um, to me, that's, again, we've made it about as easy as we can for the quarterback. He has to figure out who he's reading in, in terms of number seven. Uh, and, again, if you see the videos, we talk about he's responsible for lane two um, of the field on each side, and it's going to tell you where to go. Um, and so from there, he's just got to get the ball of his hands on time and, and, and be good. And it worked out. Like I said, our guy last year was player of the year, um, was preseason player of the year, but that's some – Another conversation uh, with us not playing. They, they took it away from him and gave it to somebody else. No, not at all. It's still player of the year. Yeah, so. Um, but that's and that's what we did the most of is we ran RPOs, deep choice. We ran cross and some quick game. Um, and that's the gist of it. Like and He's controlling lane two, number seven, boundary safety to release of two. He can say those things you know, in, in, in his, in a sleep and no, I'm, I'm working off those guys. Um, so it's been, it's been really good to see him grow in it because he doesn't have as much to, to sit there and, you know, we, we, we don't, we don't overload him, but we give him some clear guidelines of where he needs to be. I love that. And Got a couple of coaches. Coach Zoe says, uh, as a coordinator, I can see how innovative this is, talking about you getting in the mindset of your defensive of the defensive guy. Puts thoughts I already have watching film and organizes it. Uh, coach Garrett says, awesome game planning and adjustments. And uh, Nate, what's going on, man? What's up, Coach? How are you doing? I want to get into the – you talked about it. You said your quarter – you allow your wide receivers to make – the RPO calls, if it's a second level call, call or something like that. Yeah. So let me pull this up over here. All right. So, um, we have six RPO packages. Okay. Um, and the ones that you're talking about there are package number four, um, where we are looking to, um, attack that support player. We would call that second level. So even if it's that boundary safety that's coming down and, and we're going to throw a glance off of, uh, we still think of him in terms of a second level guy because that's where he's going to end up for us. Um, so I can kind of hit one of those or I can go straight to, or each one of these, or I can go straight to the. Uh... I want to know it all. Okay. Well, completely honest. All right, so, again, you guys do all these things, I'm sure. So we just kind of broke it down to actually where it fits for us. Uh, unprotected edge split flow. So we're thinking zone with an arc with that tight end blocking, okay? He's coming back for that scrape exchange guy, and we want to, you know, pull press uh, the nickel uh, or the boundary safety or corner that's squatting um, for the RPO, okay? So we're affecting – we're reading two guys affecting two people. Okay, so it's, again, it's just zone read. Um, if we get a give read, we're going to give it all day long. Pull read, we're going to pull and we're going to work to force. Um, and just it's extended triple. Okay, um, so it's exit side routes. If it's to a single receiver, and we're going to have that pop route where we're going to you know make contact with the corner. And if he wants to get nosy and peek in, we're going to let him go and start working to expand to those ticks. Um, if my exit side is two or more, we would have a bubble. Um, and then we can tag those deals where like the tied in on the little slide route, um, or I can you know, have the motion guy come with me, that orbit motion. It can be starting in 20 personnel and, and fast motioning him out of the backfield. We just treat that as trips bubble as bubble out of the backfield. Um, and then we have the protection. We protect this package with naked and bootleg with a puller. Okay. So if you're overplaying, we want to get to, um, 
you know, giving you a chance to push the ball down the field one way or another. Okay. Um, now we want to get this, like we want to do unprotected edge split flow against a one high defense. All right. And, and we treat these RPOs. I look at them as passes. Um, now, not necessarily that I'm throwing the ball, but attacking the same areas that I wouldn't pass. So for us, we treat this, we want one high. We treat it like a curl flat philosophy in that if I'm running this zone read, my tailback, if I've got just some old school air raid, all curls, my tailback is taking that middle curl in, in that A gap inside zone. All right. My quarterback should attack in the area that, I'm running to where the outside curl should be. And then that bubble or the pop route should be on the sideline as my spacer. Okay. So again, this is going to be a one high deal for us. We want to bring back protection uh, on that scrape exchange. Okay. Now, if we're getting to the second one we have is unprotected edge. Same thing, but it's full flow. So we'll keep that tight in front side, just thinking outside zone. Uh, read the backside in. Could be uh, a GT counter as well, uh, but there is no arc for support, okay? Um, and we will also package it with wrong way runs, sweet boot, things like that. That fits in this category for us, all right? And this is a all right, same kind of read. We're going to read the end. Uh, D into force player, split field. So we're running one way and we're passing the other. So we want to try these with outside runs. So we're going to probably get a push crack on the front side and then our exit side routes. If it's a single receiver to the field, we'll run a skinny post return. Two receivers go whip, just like your boot routes. Uh, boundary single, he'll run that five-step glance and return. Boundary two, glance return with a whip. With a whip. Uh, same thing, we want to protect this with naked and bootleg with puller, all right? And again, now this is one where we would think of in terms of too high. We want to run this against too high, meaning that we want that backside linebacker to have to keep pace with his gap. You know I mean? If that, that side that my quarterback is exiting, I want that linebacker on that side to have to keep pace with that B gap that's moving. Um, to, to kind of slow down and outflank him if he is, even if he's one to exchange. Um, so we'll even have our tackle kind of slow down where if he wants to play back, he can hinge back on that D end. Now I'm giving, I'm black my read, I'm giving. So, but again, we want that to be a two high. So our that fits our run and how we're going to protect our quarterback as he exits that. So we want our routes to match. So we want to get more vertical stretch routes. I'm sorry, vertical stretch routes um so we think of this in terms of digs that dig post or uh, you know or smash in terms of we want to high low somebody um so we'll get those boot routes over there some flood type routes and if the quarterback is attacking downhill all right um so that's how we have, that's how we would go about reading a first level guy and pulling it and that's how we want to match it um now, obviously, can we be right and can we be wrong? Yeah, we can. Um, so at least on this first one, on the on, on package number two right there, we won't have a front side route. Anytime we have an inside run, even if it's zone read and we're exiting one way, we will have an access route uh, and 11 personnel on the front side of that. So if we're getting rotation into where I'm ex exiting, I want to throw that single as part of an access package. Um so that's how we're working on those first two. Does that does that make sense? Or yeah, it does. I like that. All right. So then we get into the access package, and like I, I tell people to think of this one in terms of I got my run play, and I'm calling all stops across the board. And if I've got any of them pre-snap, I can take it. All okay. Right. Um, so okay, so access for us is we're going to protect the quarterback from C gap to C gap. So split zone, power counter, inside runs. Okay, uh, in certain looks we could get unprotected edges, and that's really if we're running full flow outside zone um, by base run rule, he's going to have a hitch there backside if it's a single, so he can stand up and throw that um, on the backside. But that's really the only one. Okay, 
Now, obviously the zone read stuff, the quarterback's going to pull and give off that initial reaction at the end. Um, it's important for us as we get in these packages in, in three and four that we determine the expectation for the quarterback, okay? Um, and, and A, he's going to know what we expect, and, and, and we're all going to be on the same page as a staff, okay? So we're going to tell him the mindset that we want. So we're going to tell him he's aggressive to the give mindset, um, meaning at the same time we're not going to sit there and, and, and bitch at this kid, man, why didn't you throw it? Like we just told him you're aggressive to the give. He needs to tell us what he saw in that read defender, number six or number seven, as we get into that. Um, he needs to tell us what he saw, and that will help us, again, get to the next package, okay? Um, he does not have to put the ball in the mesh if he's going to throw a pre-snap. If I've got the access stop route, we'll take it, okay? Uh, again, this can be a pre-snap or a post-snap read. Um his post snap read is based on our center's point. So we'll always point. Um, and, and it's not, again, point the mic, but it's not the mic. It's, it's the backer that the center's going to work to or that we're pulling for and power or counter the insert. That's our point. Okay. And 11 personnel. I'm sorry, I got it right here. So he's always going to be responsible for first pass the point. Okay. So if, if I point the will. It's most likely, let's say I'm going into the boundary there, short side two by two, and I point the will, the boundary safety would end up being first passed in most looks. Okay. It could be the cry, it could be a cloud corner, but first pass the point is what I'm responsible for on that side. And then one or two behind the point, depending on personnel. So if it's 10 personnel and I point at this guy, the first back side, because I don't have anybody else to block him. That's how we equate numbers. Um, so every number we add to the back side, this number goes up. Okay. So if it's 11 personnel, it'd be two behind the point because our tied in, again, these are C-gap to C-gap runs. So our tied in, it could be split zone, zone lock, power. Count. We're accounting for those six guys in the box. So his would be the second behind that point. All right. So if you think about it in terms of it's 4-2 over, he points the will. It's a good chance you get in the boundary safety and the nickel would be your seven. All okay. right. So what we don't, and the reason we do that instead of just saying you got to read this nickel with the boundary safety is when you start getting those teams that want to play with your look, as far as you may get the, a lot of times what we're starting to get is they'll go play out there and it's like a ripless match, but they're going to spin their safety off of wherever our tight end goes. Cause he's going to lead you to the ball most of the time. Um, so that guy is technically number seven as he spins down and not that nickel. So he's got to be aware of who that guy is. And what we tell him is it's the closest guy in lane two that can make a play on the ball. All right. And, I like how you simplify that. Yeah. So, and again, it's, we want to make sure he's reading the right guy. And now, and again, that's how we, and we talk about the activate, call it talk. That same process leads us to calling the routes off of what is left. All right, so I won't try to get too far ahead, but uh, quarterback pre-snap decisions based on numbers, graphs, uncovered, just like everybody else does. Um, if he wants a pre-snap bubble, we're just out levers to snot out of him. Throw it, man. You're never going to get us mad throwing a bubble. <laughs> so we've got run route run rules. So if we just call 23 boss split zone left, uh, based on the formation and surface. Uh, we will have the routes. We could go block, you know, depending on what those what that entails. Um, but the routes in that is an access route for us. Access is um, – we kind of look at it a little bit different. Access, you can give it to us in front of you or behind you, but you're giving it to us as long as you don't have a safety over there. Um, so if we feel like we can uh, throw a stop route at six yards and catch tackle – that to us is we have access. If the answer is we can't do that, we have access, but it's behind you. So we're going to get going and, and get vertical. And he can take that either way. He's got access. So they've got to have a safety over there to make it two over one. We're trying to force it. Um, and, and by rule, backside of every run that we have, unless we tag it with other RPOs, is bubbles. So we don't even have to tag it. It's already built in. 
but two or more. Is the front side game planned or, or called? No, not not in just access deal. Um, so like if we went up there and it's two by one, the single, it doesn't matter if it's as long as it's an inside run coming to him or away from him, he's going to have the access route. Okay. Um, now if we're running, if we're running outside zone to him, that role will change. He's going to now, uh, go corner to low safety on his side, push crack. Um, so it kind of depends. It'll change on surface. Those guys have to learn that. Just inside run, outside run, and my front side or back side, and how many of us are there? Um, and we build we build route or block off that. Okay. Um, now, we can also come back behind it and tag any quick game we want, okay? True quick game, like catch, throw quick game, uh, stops, slants, speed cutouts. But we'll also put option routes out there, okay? So – I don't know how many of you guys are starting to see people play cover three or cover one with outside leverage of number two, um, or they mix it around. But, like, that's where we would want to call, you know, split zone Z option. And we treat that as access. So if we get one high, all right, and you're trying to outnumber our box, as long as you rotate away from it, it's one-on-one -on -one right there with a flat player, I mean, he can abort the run, and we're going straight option route right there because, we again, He's got access to it. Um, we can give it to him. So they've got the t tagged quick games as well. All right. Um, we will we will protect this package with deep choice and double moves off the RPO routes. All right. And again, I got asked that there day is like, if you got these RPOs, do you need play action and this that? Hell yeah! Like that, you're going to score touchdowns if you start double moving and play actioning off of the play action is off the route. You know, so like play action in your route and double move off that route and, and protect your quarterback and score touchdowns. That's, that's, that's the how, that's how you get back to running that base. Like we talked about earlier. Okay. Um, so package three and four are the same. It's like we're reading second level guys. We're reading support players. We're reading that guy that's, they're trying to get to be the sixth, seventh, eighth guy in the run fit. That's, that's who we're trying to do and access. We're trying to be efficient. Okay, and that we're going to throw a lot of routes where we're not necessarily moving. I, I, I can't remember who it was. You know, I'll see you guys on Twitter all the time. I'm on, I'm on there constantly. Uh, put the Sarkeesian uh, quote up there that he's as fast as a five star with his, you know, catching the stop. We 100% agree. Um, you know, so that's the difference for us in the access and the activate. So we feel like our mindset should match as a quarterback. So we're going to try to catch in, in this package, this fourth one. We want to catch the ball on the move. So all these routes that we're going to call, that the receivers are going to call, they're all going to be ones that we are going to catch on the run, okay? Um, so he's aggressive to the pull mindset, all right? He's always going to put the ball in the mesh. We equate it to you're always going to set the hook. Even if you know you're about to throw it, Put the ball in there, set the hook, get that guy with big movements, all right? Because big movements equal big grass. Um, and, and to kind of to talk to us, talk to these guys about give or pull, we don't overcomplicate it. They're not looking at shoulders or turns or steps. If he can tackle the ball for less than six, we want to throw it. If he can't, we want to give it, all right? So and we try to equate this with wide splits. Uh, so he's got to make big movement to give us that big grass. Um, so we want to be a more aggressive mindset, but it's still the same give pull. Um, this is also, again, we talk about up here, why the hell didn't you throw it, man? He's wide open. This goes for you all line coaches down here too, man, is that, <laughs> you know, yeah, it got may pop open and he comes spitting through the middle of it. But we've told this kid, this is the expectation of this play. From us, the staff, him as the quarterback, and if he gets a big movement, we're going to throw the ball. Okay, so this protects us from the mo line coaches. That, man, well, sure. hey gap, man, hey gap, all that good stuff. Um, it's a full field deal. He's responsible for number seven or the extra hat on each side. Okay, uh, the same thing post snap reads based on the center's point, one pass or a first and first or second behind, um, depending on the personnel. All right, so we have three packages right there where it's call it. So call it, we're talking to the two receiver guys. 
Um, so the single's got the access just like he does in the access package. So we don't want him to be getting routes from everywhere, you know, so we're not going to overload his brain. So call it, we're just going to get routes from the two receiver side. Okay. And they're going to call their routes based on the triangle of coverage that they get on that side. So they will. You so know, you're giving those guys the option of you're giving the wide receivers the option of making their routes. Yeah, the number two receiver, the guy closest to the quarterback, he's kind of direct in traffic right there. Since all that, since all every route is going to be based off of where number seven is and the safety's relationship to number seven. Um, so he's got the closest, it's literally right in front of him. All right. So it's not like we're, he doesn't have access to the whole playbook. He's got, we've got like five options for that guy where, depending on what that safety is and what that structure looks like, he can call to the quarterback and to the outside receiver just to get that thing communicated. So he's got five combinations right there. Now, one of them, the first one is bubble. Like I said, we want to throw a bubble. So, well, it's as simple as number seven is inside of me. It's that, I'll say it's that nickel outside linebacker. Okay. And then, so he's out of the equation. He doesn't exist to us anymore. So we're calling the route off the safety what's left. Well, if I'm already outside of that safety, I've got him out leveraged. I want to stay out leveraged and run that bubble. Okay. Um, now, we, our bubble on that's a little different. It's kind of like what you see Baylor would do where they would take a couple steps forward, read that corner, and then pedal out of there. I like that. So, if we, you know, if he messes up or they're trying to mess with us and take that safety from, you know, inside the hash and running to the numbers to the field, uh, you know, more power to them. That's not very sound uh, for us. I guess the people we play. Um so we'll just set it down and get north and south off of that guy. Um, but that's literally as easy as it's going to go. Um, so if that safety is getting high or he's getting outside of me at number two, again, because I'm out there two, three yards outside the hash, if he's out there working high or getting over top of me, the first question I ask is why is that safety high? And for us, it's, you know, anything over 10 to 12, if he starts getting 14, 15 yards, he's getting there for a reason. Uh, you'll hear me if you sat in our meeting room, I ask all those guys, why is the safety getting so high? You know, he's getting depth to get over one. I mean, it's a pretty uniform response at this point. Um, so we know we can get inside of that guy. So now we're going to get that glance from number two and a follow route from number one. So, again, he's just going to call off what he sees. He's got you know, rotation to him, rotation away from him. Uh, so basically, if I'm calling around off this safety, he's going to be – he's two together right there with that nickel, meaning I'm probably going to get some edge pressure. I'm going to see that as rotation to me and call it slam bubble. Um, if I feel that safety is working to the post pre-snap, in our league, a lot of times that's going to be man. So we'll go to slot fade. Um, so he's, like I said, it sounds complicated as hell, but it's all right in front of him. <laughs> and he's looking at one guy. And basically, where is that one guy standing? What is it related to? So when we watch film, like I'll watch it with the inside guys specifically and say like what is this safety doing why is he standing there what is he trying to do why is he not looking at you um and we've got it broken down how we determine that uh off those safeties pretty well um and, and you know use the acronym shell um separation meaning where are they on the relation to the hash and each other what is their height you know how deep are they all right. Where are their eyes? Okay. Uh, what's their leverage? Are they inside leverage, outside leverage? Um, how am I relating to number two? If we're in trips, how am I relating to number three? Um, and then what's his lean? What's his body language? Okay. So, yeah, we've all had the shell, but that's, that's how we interpret what the shell is, what that guy is doing. Um, so once we teach that, and like I said, if you put two receivers wide to the field, the, the number two's uh, you know, outside the hash, and number one's outside the numbers, there's only so many ways that, that guy, those guys can line up three over two. Uh, right, hey, we've, Coach, we've got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the difference between a standard option and a bootleg option in the RPO system? 
A standard option and a bootleg option. I'm not sure I'm when it comes to route combinations. Are and, we talking about and these first couple packages right here? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, we just treat that as boot. These one and two right here, because he's unprotected edge, because he's gonna have to push, read the DN, and then go and push and force the defender. He's got to get the hell out of there. Cause if not, that DN's unprotected. So if we have these unprotected edges, he knows I've got to push to get out of there. I'm not protected. Uh, so thinking if I'm running zone read, zone to the left or the reads to the right, if I've got the pull, like I'm not standing there reading for the throw, I'm zone reading, pushing and forcing a defender. Whereas these access, these three and four, that's what we talk about being protected C-gap to C-gap. So we treat that just like if we call jet protection or slide protection, he's protect, protected edge to edge. The only guy that could make him hot is number seven on each side, the guy that we're reading. Um, so the hot is built into the read right there. So I hope that answers. Okay. We got another one. Uh, how do the wide receivers relate the routes they're going to run to the quarterback? Yeah, and again, if you guys have coached baseball, like I, I've had to coach some JV baseball before in my life. Um, God bless you. You got to make up those signals all the time. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you steal four times in, in the, the first couple of innings, it's a pretty good chance somebody's got your steal signal. So you go in the dugout and say, all right, instead of I'm wiping my sleeve, I'm going to wipe my leg. You know, so the signals are not – it could be as easy as if my arms are straight – we're running a glance. If my arms are bent, we're running the out, you know, um, if my hands are open or closed. Um, and if it's this call it package where there's two receivers doing it, he's just got to relate that to the quarterback and outside of him. Okay. So when we get to talk right there, that's just a single receiver. So it's just him and that quarterback um, relating those things together. Um, so like, we come out and run call it. We want to run the bubble. So if he can run the bubble, he's not going to signal anything. He's just going to look out there and, you know, he may give him a head nod or, but that's how that's going down right there. Um, he's only going to signal when he's changing around for that bubble. Okay. Uh, and then those guys will change it in the middle of, like if we have to change it in the middle of a game, we can change it in the middle of a game. <clears throat> and, you know, we'll give them some freedom. The only thing we say is it doesn't need to be big, demonstrative movements. Uh, and we want to try to get it to be stuff where we can do it at or below our waist. Okay. And how, how often do they, like, sit there and try to come up with stuff? Uh, man, we really don't change them that much, I'll be honest with you. I hope okay. our league is watching. Um, if, we've, if, if we're playing – uh, a team that runs similar coverage just two weeks in a row, um, we're going to make sure that we probably mix it up a little bit. Um, you know, we'll do that. Um, and the, uh, you know, we'll try to make sure our film guy doesn't necessarily catch all that stuff in film, too. Um, not necessarily cutting off play, but we don't have to start until the ball's about to be snapped, buddy. You know what I'm saying? So, um, we try to hide it a little bit on that film, but like I said, we, we haven't had anybody that's picked it up because it's kids doing on the field. So if, if that coach is screaming to him to do that, and the first time you change it one, the other one, they don't know what it is. So like if they're worried about our signals and trying to jump stuff, they're just telling us, Hey, please double move us is the way we look at it. Okay. So we, like, again, we've really not had anybody mess with our signals. That we know of, anyways. Um, awesome. Great, great question, coaches. If y'all have any more co uh, questions, go ahead and put them in chat. Cool. So same same principle over here when we go talk. It's, the only thing is talk us to the single guy. So he's going to you know call his route based on the triangle uh, of coverage over there. Those two receiver side guys, the backside dudes will have – uh, hitches, just locked hitches. So, and we could do this out of trips. I know everybody used to, you know, you call zone lock and throw uh, all hitches. And if that mic bites, you throw it to the number three, right? Yep. Um, and then the first time that you do that, it's awesome. And then the next play, 
they're stepping that safety down on top of it. They got a six man box telling you to throw it, and that guy's covered. So our answer to that is you know, we have that, but we only want to throw it against the best look. Um, so for us, we would call talk, and that single receiver guy is going to give him uh, our best route based on uh, the leverage over there between the corner, the safety, and the defensive end, um, and, and kind of telling you where that safety is going to go and how he's lined up uh, in relationship to that defensive end. And if that corner is lying to you or not, if he's going to bail out of there because the safety's leaving, uh, whatnot. So, again, here we want to run the glance until we can't. Um, we'll run it against press, depending on the, you know, exactly with the leverage. Um, and then it comes back to ac access and leverage. So, um, we're going to throw the go route when we have the best leverage and no access to, to, to run the underneath stuff to run the glands. Um, now, if you want to give us access, but get it way, you know, get heavy inside leverage, then we're going to signal and we're going to run a six step speed cut out um, and, and run away from you. So I like that. That's, we give them those three options. Now we'll come up with maybe one or two more from time to time. And it's, it's easy to we're throwing stop. Um, or if we feel like our guys, we got, we had some bigger outside guys last year and we play a little corner, we may just throw a, you know, stand up and throw it to you a now route and say, all right, tackle me, you, you know, tackle me once and then we'll go vertical in the next play. Something like that. Right. Um, just to, to make them tackle us, maybe put single receiver to the field, um, and work that way. Now activate. Like I said before, is we don't want to have him get routes from both sides. So we're not, you know, for us, activate kind of solves that to make it a full field deal. We'll get in the pistol. And again, he'll determine which number seven is most dangerous. So it could be like that boundary safety. He's tighter and that nickel's wide. Uh, if you start getting really heavy at RPO, you start getting that fast side, slow side where that guy on the back is going to hang out of the fit and they're going to put the guy on the away from the back and, and get him in the fit right now at the snap. Um, this is kind of our way to get around that a little bit. Um, so we'll pick which guy is most dangerous, which number seven. Uh, and then he's going to turn on the, the call it or talk on that side. He's going to activate that side to give me routes. All right. So if you don't get activated, it starts off, it's all hitches. So if you don't get anything, he can treat this like an access. And I, you got me the field stop. I'll take it. You got me the boundary hitch. I'll take it. Um, I can treat it that way if I want, if I'm the quarterback. Um, all right. So I see this nickel. He's kind of creeping right there and he's moving around and it looks like rotation. Well, I'm going to activate that side because he's the most dangerous. And then those guys over there are going to call the route. Okay. So here comes the safety's creeping down. He's going to rotate to me. I want to call slam bubble. I may have to protect myself on that number seven to the field and get the ball out, slam bubble into rotation. And, you know, we're throwing into that field pressure. Um, so we're trying to stay, instead of being behind or guessing, we're trying to make sure we get these chunk plays when we get them. You know what I mean? So um, don't, don't, let's not pass up the opportunity. Um, and again, these, these routes that I went through right here on all of these, really, we, uh, again, we're going to throw those. We think we start, you know, the last week of March and spring, and our bowl game is going to be in December, and we're going to throw these same five-step glances and stop routes the whole time, man. We're going to throw them every day for as long as we're playing football games. So we're getting high reps and turnovers, and we're calling high-percentage routes always against the best look. So like, I don't have to worry about going over there and spending too much time, you know, working, selling bubbles against cloud corners or how he has to adjust that glance. If that corner's three yards inside of him, I, or we don't spend time on bad looks because we, you know, if we're doing our jobs right, um, we're never throwing into that look. So we're getting uh, high percentage throws and routes against the premium look just because we're taking advantage of it and let these guys, you know, give them some freedom to make those calls. All right. So I, I get asked this a lot and there's a question in the chat. What do you do against man to man? Do you have routes built in that are strictly for man to man? You let the quarterback call that or are you checking out of it, doing something different? What, what's your, what are y'all's thought process for that? 
Yeah. So like man to man, it's not as big of an issue. It just depends on, again, it goes back to leverage. Okay. Um, so like if you're playing that man to man where you're going to be on my outside eye and you're going to try to force number two to that post safety, I mean, you're, you're giving me we, that to me goes back to access. Like you're giving me access to run a slant right now, brother. Okay. Like I'm going to stick the ball in, bait the hook, get that linebacker to take it. And I'm going to throw that clan or that slant away from your leverage. Same deal. If you're giving me inside leverage, uh, I've got the slot fade built in right there. Cause you're rotating away from me. It's two over two. I've got that built in right there. If I need it. Um, now, do we want to go out there and make a living throwing RPOs against man? No. But we have this built in right here to where is it the best possible high percentage thing we can do? Maybe not. But it's also not – we're not throwing stop routes in the press man just because we've called split zone stops, right? Uh, we're used to, to, to altering our routes. We're used to – you know, checking those routes <clears throat> based in this package. So, man, it's not as big a deal of us. Um, uh, if you want to line up, play me head up, and man, well, I, you know, again, I go back to Alabama. So we're going to start motion and moving you around, and we're going to create our own leverage, right? Um, and, and force it one way or another. Uh, so, that's if we're talking in the RPO world, like that's where we're going to get to to keep it. Viable. Now, if we're playing just normal football outside of the RPOs, we're going to have some different answers for man coverage like everybody else. Um, so, but that that keeps us viable right there. Okay. And then uh, another question is: um, Does the quarterback have a package where he gets to call what he wants, or can he override a call made by the wide receiver? Uh, yeah, they, he can. He can communicate it. Okay. So, like. Um, other places I've been, we've had – I've had, like, like I said, I coached Juco for a while, so I coached some guys that weren't necessarily the most intelligent um, in some areas. I, I coached one guy who couldn't read, but he could do this. Um, he, um, that's wrong, but – yeah. No, I wouldn't cause it, no, it wasn't because he was extremely dyslexic kid. I shouldn't say it like that. He, he was dyslexic. He had probably couldn't hardly read and write and do those things. But he could go out there and, and call these routes. He was awesome. He ended up graduating from Auburn and playing receiver. Oh, yeah. um, so he's an unbelievable athlete, unbelievable athlete. But anyways, um, so, like, yeah, these guys can do it. I started out before, and I've had the quarterbacks do it. I've had receivers do it. Um, it's really they kind of got to work in concert. For us, we just don't want the quarterback to have too much on his plate. We want to focus on – throwing the football where it needs to be done and protecting himself and those kind of things. And we'll take it off of him with the receivers calling it. But if he's seeing something different, he can override it. Uh, and you may get times where our receivers, if they're doing a, you know, a kind of a weird look, look, or it's uh, cloudy, like he can tell him, Hey man, you call it. All right. And it's, it's just another hand signal, you know, put a phone up to your ear and say, Hey man, you call it. Um, and so they can go back and forth right there. It doesn't happen a whole lot. You'll see it late. And again, because the quarterback's the guy, his, his main job in this is to set the defense. Um, so you'll see a lot of times where hands go up, go down, hands go up, go down, like the fake claps. His job is he's trying to set the defense like he would if he was back in, you know, in the wing T days where he's putting his hands underneath the center and setting the defense. Uh, so that's his responsibility. So he set the defense and maybe he gets a creep that we're getting rotation and we're not getting that, 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 uh, inside receiver running the glance route. Look, that, that we have seen when he sees it late, he can change it. So it's interchangeable. We just got to make sure it gets communicated down the line to the outside guy. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a real open process right here where these guys, as long as they're all on the same page, um, we feel like we've got a combination out there. We can, we can make work. I like how you're giving your kids essentially the chalk last to make the defense wrong. We're trying to, like we're trying to, and I guess, and I know one thing's going to happen is and it may not be in the chat right now. And it may be later on. It's going to be, what do you do when they start disguising and moving and doing that kind of stuff where they're showing you quarters and then they're hitting you with cloud late. Right. Um, 
And again, I know that we could you can talk about that maybe another time, but um, that's where our, for us we get the deep choices for touchdowns because if you're making big movements in the secondary and we're running our, our our deep routes off of your movement and I can break to open grass, well, I, I, I'm about to hurt you, like hurt you, hurt you. So we invite that part of it too. So like when these guys start moving around, we tell our guys if they fool you, don't be upset. We need to be excited because they're about to score a touchdown, whether it be with a double move or with the deep choice stuff. Uh, that's what they're that's what they're giving us and allowing us at that point. Okay, uh, we'll get fooled. These guys, I mean, they they get paid money too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean they're gonna they're gonna come up with something. Now it's not gonna be as much as you think. Um, like I said, that we've talked with power five schools. We've talked to one of the schools was in the national championship this year. Um, and th- this can float at their level, right? This can float at their level. And even your kids, I, I don't care. Like you may have 25 kids on your entire roster and, and be, you know, at Port Gibson high school over here next to me in, in the middle of nowhere. And you can still do this. It's just the amount of time that you got to spend with it because you're not spending time on new plays. You're spending time on new looks with your same plays, um, which to us has been worth it because we get all that carryover from you come in as a freshman to three years down the road, four years down the road. I mean, how many glances have you run at that point? Um, so you, you should have seen a lot of different things and things that can be done to take that route away and how corners are going to play you and how to stem and, and fight through, uh, you know, fight through contact. So we're running the crap out of that route over and over and over again for years. We're going to get pretty good at it, especially if we're always calling it at the right time. How long do you think? And uh, I would definitely love to get you back on to talk about the choice route. Uh, mm-hmm. Before we go, how long does it take for the players to get the choice route? The choice route, like the deep choice stuff? Yes. Uh you know, it, to me, that is one where I can't call – I can't draw that up on the board and expect a kid to know it. He's got to go out there and do that. Like, he's got to go screw it up, basically, is what I tell him. It's like, we'll walk through it. Um, and, you know, we've got a uh, – for us, we've got a really good um, uh, area in the gym where I can put those guys up and they can kind of look down on other people walking through and doing it. So they can kind of see how these things are all work. Kind of like a drone, but you're sitting there watching it in a walkthrough, I guess is the best way to put it. But you can see these things happening and how they would adjust and, and those type deals. You can walk through it a bunch and then we'll go out and we'll go versus our defense, especially early on before maybe in summer school, or before we can get, um, get pads on and we'll just three over two which, you know, back in the day before we started doing the deep choice stuff, I hated three over two, man. It's like, what, what do you want me to call? You're, you're just telling me to throw it to the worst look, and you guys are going to win the drill. Now I love it because, again, like you said, I get the, I get the chalk last, and these guys are breaking wherever, and it's perfect because even if you've got your scout team guys over there, I still do the scout team for us. And, you know, instead of worrying so much about that guy getting the perfect look, my guy needs to see this guy may be trying to play cover two and not get off the hash. So my outside guy needs to know, play what I see, not what I think pre-snap, play what I see. Um, so that's a big thing. It's just you'd be shocked at how hard it is for sometimes to get kids to run with their eyes up, mm-hmm. uh, see what's going on. Take That kind of takes a while uh, for some of these dudes. But it's just trial and error, um, you know, in, in that, and, you, and your quarterback's got to get on the same page. But if, if I've got a spring in a, in a fall camp and some summer school time, um, you can be more than proficient at it. You can be pretty good at it. Like, we went out, and, and last year was our first year really running it here. And, I mean, we are doing it against Southern Miss and got guys, you know, running free. Um, and having and we didn't even really do it in the spring. We just did it in fall camp introducing it. And, and like I said, we were out there, and it was our top – top two deals that we did. So it's, I'd say it's different. It's going to be different uh, for each guy. Again, you don't have to, we got a bunch of adjustments, especially the inside choice, man. That guy can go just about in there anywhere. <laughs> and, um, like you don't have to have all those. You, you go off what you see. So like, if you're not ever going to see a bunch of trap two or t- Tampa two or, um, you know, three cloud, 
Like, you don't need to worry about those things. Maybe you're going to see quarters, two read, and cover three and you know, rotate two you're away from you. Like, focus on that, man. That's cool. Whatever you're going to see can, can dictate your options. Okay. I love that. And, coaches, if you want to learn more about that, again, he has uh, courses – on coach tube i'm dropping that in the chat where he goes over all that coach i appreciate you coming on uh yeah. do you mind if the coaches have any questions to reach out on twitter is that the best place to get yeah twitter for sure because that's where i'm at man because like i said i've got three kids that are sitting in the living room probably raising hell right now uh so i'm looking at twitter all the time to, to <laughs> set up off patrol or you know whatever i got going on uh, for me, it's my little girl loves My Little Ponies, uh, and my son loves Blippy. What was the last one? Blippy. I've heard that one. I don't know that that's what don't, it, it. It's baby crack. Don't do it. Don't introduce. <laughs> stick with Paw Patrol. I like it. I will stick with Paw Patrol, and he likes uh, – what's that other one, man? We've got on the rickety rivets, or I can't pronounce it. He gets mad at me because I call it the wrong thing. So. <laughs> Well, Coach, you were the man. I appreciate it. I know you had a long day. Matt drills. Do you have Matt drills tomorrow? Is it every day? No, no, no. We're we're like I said, we, we're in a weird situation where it's actually been a year this week since we got sent home last year for COVID. Uh, so we actually got that's the last time we practiced football with a helmet on. Yeah. These guys have had shoulder pads on. It was December in 2019. We're playing in the Celebration Bowl in Atlanta, and they haven't done it since. Haven't blocked anybody, tackled anybody, done any of that stuff since, uh, including until uh, really about three weeks ago. We haven't even been allowed in the weight room. So these guys are, are hurt. You know? They're hurt. And today was rough. I ain't gonna lie to you. Today, watching these guys do this was rough. I bet. I bet. Well, coaches, thank you all for being here. Coach, thank you for being here. And uh, I will talk to you all later, coaches. You all have a great night.